What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Backtrack Cinema. My name is Jason, and this is my 31 Days of Horror. And today's topic, guys, is my favorite horror sequel, which I picked, A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. There are so many good sequels, man, in horror. So many. We talked earlier about Jason Lives. There's great Halloween sequels. There's great Friday the 13th sequels. I love this. What This Nightmare on Elm Street sequel is my absolute favorite. There are so many more sequels that we could have picked, but I went with Dream Warriors. This is, again, a childhood favorite. A lot of times I would watch this in conjunction with Jason Liz, but because these were like the MTV movies, you know, these MTV horror movies with the great soundtracks, the great kills. You were more celebrating now, Jason and Freddie, more than anything. You know what I mean? They They got a little bit less scary. I mean, this is this definitely is the best balance of Freddy from his dark side to his humorous side. So there's going to be this could be fun. There's going to be lots to talk about here with some Dream Warriors. So make sure you comment down below. Let me know what you think of Dream Warriors and all that. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel and check out some 31 Days of Horror and check out the other stuff on my channel. A lot of ways with this movie. We still get a lot of things from the first one. They're, they're bridging off the first movie, kind of ignoring the second movie, which probably was just an experiment. They wanted to do something completely different. I, I love number two. Don't get me wrong, but I like how they went back and built off the first movie again, sticking to the mythology that Wes Craven set up with Freddy and, you know, how the dreams work and all that jazz. Now, this one centers around the Elm Street kids who are all in this state hospital because they're all having the dreaming of the same person who we knew as Freddy. None of the doctors are listening to these kids. And along comes Nancy, who's an intern, comes in and helps these kids battle against Freddy because she knows what's really going on and she's not blowing smoke up at their fucking ass. You know what I mean? And I love Nancy in this. I think Nancy is a terrific character in this movie. Let go of him, you bastard. She's still that same Nancy who faces against her fears and now she's teaching all these other kids face against their fears. There are other kids involved, not just Kristen, all good kids, smart kids. And they're like the last of the Elm Street kids. They are the last group of kids whose parents burnt Freddy many, many years ago. And Nancy tells them the truth about all this stuff. She doesn't hold nothing back. One of my favorite moments in this movie that has been for a long time now is when she tells them who Freddy really is. He was a child murderer before he died. After he died, he became something worse. Just the way she's delivering this story and that great music's kicking in. Always love that part, man. And he had another little cool thing to the dreams in here. And that's that's told through Patricia Arquette's character, who who's really good in this movie. You know what I mean? I think she's really good in this movie as Kristen. She befriends Nancy. She's the one who's I would say is the closest to Nancy. but. Kristen has this power where she can dr bring people into her dreams. So now they could fight Freddy um, all together, which I thought was just really good writing because it makes sense. You're, you're adding to the lore or the mythology. You're adding to the rules of the game. And then Nancy throughout this teaches them all a dream power. You guys all have something you could do wonderfully in your dreams that they use the battle against Freddy, right? It really becomes a battle of wits in this movie. And the movie has some of the most creative kills. You know, when I go into any Nightmare on Elm Street movie for the first time, that is one of the things that is on my checklist that, okay, how creative are the kills going to be? Because they all have it in in uh, in most of, their, most of the movies, right? And in this, it's no different. The real standout one is Philip's death, where he makes these puppets and Freddy appears to him as one of his puppets. And uses him like a puppet, so he cuts all his veins open. And and Freddy's dangling him around like a little freaking puppet. Walks him up to you know the the top of the building, cuts the veins, and it looks like he just commits suicide. Right? It is such a great moment too, though the way all the Elm Street kids are trying to wake Phil up in. And you know they're a group, they're a team. They're like they have this togetherness, they have this quality to them. When they lose one of them, it really really defeats them. So you really care about all these characters and that's the thing right you got a, like a bunch of nancy's all in one movie you got a bunch of people who you really really care about and the one-liners coming out of freddy like i said he gets a little more humorous there's big break in tv welcome to prime time bitch let's get high sorry kids 
I don't believe in fairy tales. But I still really like Freddy in this movie because near the beginning of the movie, when we first start meeting him again, he is still in the shadows a lot. They expose him more and more and more. When he stands over Philip's bed, the way they got him in shadow and darkness and stuff, and he's like, shh. And he's just enjoying cutting Philip up. Like I said before about that kill, he's playing with them psychologically, right? And that's the thing with Freddy. He plays with you up here before he goes in for that big kill, like I talked about with the original Nightmare on Elm Street. And we also find out more. We find about Freddy's mother, you know, the doctor who's in care of all these students. He is really trying. You know, he takes a liking to Nancy. They go on a couple of dates. He's trying to help the kids the best way he can. And he keeps seeing the sister around. And this ends up being the spirit of Freddy's mother. And they give you this backstory of where she was locked in an insane asylum for three days and she was brutally raped a thousand times over, a hundred times over or something like that. And that's what spawned Freddy. So he's the bastard son of a thousand maniacs. And she tells him how to defeat him. You got to dig up his bones because he's he's an undead spirit or whatever have you, demon, dream demon, whatever you want to call him. And I like that, man. That's like supernatural shit right there with Sammy and Dean. You know what I mean? You know, burying the bones, holy water on the bones, you know, putting the crucifix on Freddy's face and, you know, he disappears, everything. And then there's that um, ambiguous kind of ending where the light goes on in the house, which is an interesting thing in itself that we'll talk soon about. Now, Nancy's story in here, Nancy's character arc, she's there to bring the kids along, right? And when they all battle Freddy at the end, it's awesome because it's a bunch of them battling him out. It's it's entertaining as hell. Freddy is awesome as ever. And he's just playing with them on every moment. You know what I mean? The way Nancy gets killed, I've never been a big fan of. I enjoy the hell out of her in this movie. I have no problem killing Nancy. It's just the way they do it. After they think they killed Freddy, Freddy appears as Nancy's dad. And it just seems like, no, no, no. Nancy would be so much smarter than this. She would know something's up. Something would be, you know, she'd had that intuitive nature to her to figure this shit out and she just sees her dad hugs him freddy stabs her although i love it i love how freddy it's his turn now <laughs> but she just falls for it right now at the end she still kills freddy she'll still she, she, while she's dying she gets one up on him sticks his glove into his body and then uh dr gordon is doing this thing at the cemetery where he's burying freddy's bones and everything like that and they kill him right and that ending I was telling you about where Dr. Gordon's going to sleep. Nancy's dead. The kids are all right. The kids are safe. It's all over. And then a light goes on in this house, this model house of Nancy's house from the first movie. Now, you can look at this two ways. It could be Freddie saying, OK, I'm not really dead. You know what I mean? But the, a lot of the fan theory stuff out there and what I'm more opposed to believe is that that's Nancy. You have this demon stalker who comes haunt you in your dreams. Now that Nancy's dead, the one who defeated him first. I would like to think she would come in your dreams or help you when you're having a nightmare. She's like this protector um, in your dreams. You know what I mean? I have no idea why they never went that route. I think that would have been a fantastic place to take this. An interesting place to take this. Um, series but they didn't but you know, thankfully we got heather langenkamp back for a new nightmare so that's awesome right but yeah the dream warriors man great flick it does everything that great sequel does it builds upon things ups the antes of everything you know better and better kills the practical effects are awesome the acting is awesome the story is great man Having a bunch of these dream warriors like these, the Battle Freddy and stuff like that, having it out in the dream world, I think was just always just awesome, man. These videos, I like to just shoot off the cuff. They're they're just laid back. They're chilled. They're relaxed for 31 days of horror. They're not reviews, really, guys. They're just going around, just, you know, sit, coming down here and talk to you about some of my favorite horror films. So hope you really enjoyed it. That's Dream Warriors. Comment down below and let me know what you think of Dream Warriors and we'll have a good discussion in those comments. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet subscribed and stick around for that end card because I put all relatable content for the channel there and you guys can go down the rabbit hole and check out the channel. I've got so many videos, over 350 now, I believe. Lots of content to watch on Backtrack Cinema. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. I will see you next time and I will see you in the movies. Cheers.